Today's episode is brought to you by Liquid Death. You know, I struggle with hair loss, man, and I try and do what I can. I'm on the pills right now, honestly. I was just on their website the other day. Keeps, I'm talking to you about. Two out of three men will experience some form of hair loss by the time they're 35. Keeps offers a simple, stress-free way to keep your hair. It's very easy. You go to their site, you navigate based on pictures of what's going on with you, and you make choices to help yourself. Low cost. Treatments start at just $10 per month, and Keeps offers generic versions. Prevention is key. Treatments can take four to six months to see results, so act fast. If you're ready to take action and prevent that hair loss, bruh, stop that hair loss, fam, daddy, gang. Go to K-E-E-P-S dot com slash Theo. You want to keep them bangs ganging, baby. Receive your first month of treatment for free. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash T-H-E-O to get your first month free. Keeps dot com slash Theo. Uh, today's guest is a just a real energetic man. And he's got that that thing in him. He's got that spunk in him, you know. He's a real spunk dragon if you see him. If you beat him, spunk would come out. That's who he is. He's a movie actor. And he's a comedian. You know him from a lot of the greats. And um, we're here today to get to spend time with him. We're blessed by this Minnesota Vikings fan. My friend, comedian Nick Swartzen. For me to set that parking brake And let myself all wild Shine that light on me I'll sit and tell you Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I don't need that. No, I want to just, just quickly say, Brian Callen, fucking eat me out. <laughs> eat me out. Brian Callen, where are the... All right, that's what I wanted to just kick off. Ooh. ooh. Yeah. Damn, that's a starter meal, huh? That's a, that's a kickoff. <laughs> oh, that's, that's, a, a, that's a eat me out that, off. That's a slap bro. <laughs> Dude, oh. That is a... <laughs> and boy. would he do it, though? I mean, is he I that think... snacky guy? I don't know if he would seem like a real snacker to me. I feel like he would make people do that to him. Yeah. Or I'm generous with my uh, anus. Mm. My fucking anal tunnel. Oh, yeah. It's just, you know, people can just sign up. There's a sign up sheet outside my <laughs> building. <laughs> really? Yeah. Anybody that's walking by, just jot it just down. Get in there. <laughs> Damn. Do you wish you had, do you ever wish that your anus was bigger or do you wish that it was smaller? Um, I've thought about that every day of my life when I wake yeah. up. Yeah. I just, I touch it and I'm like, mm, it's still kind of medium. But I think tighter, you know what I mean? Just for um, a lot of my friends that have, you know, big finger. Yeah. But um, yeah, you. I mean, I, but yeah, and Tyler, you could you could steal somebody's ring, you know, like they do on um, remember on uh, I think Robin Hood when he kisses the um, the captain's Dick? Dick? hand. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. He was fucking throbbing Hood, dude. Yeah, he was hard as a rock. <laughs> no, I don't want my asshole to be too loose. Like I, I want to feel my shits. You know what I mean? I don't want them to just Ooh. fall out. Yeah, yeah. Just go a wall. Yeah, like somebody just throwing them on your doorstep, like an Amazon guy. Yeah, yeah. I don't want them just fucking swan diving yeah. when I take a shit and like clean landing. I want it to. I want to feel it. Yeah. Oh wow, huh? Yeah. Damn, you're like a real outdoorsman. Yeah, I'm very thirsty. Yeah, you're I'm very, very thirsty old for the school. woods. Yeah, fucking, I'll take a shit anywhere. Man. I think in the future, people shitting will be a thing of the past. Actually, sh defecating as a human, like if you see somebody go in a room by themselves to have special desecration time. or whatever okay. it's called, desecration, desecration, leave their body, defecation, isn't it? Defecation, yeah, yeah, probably. desecration. I think is um, when you put uh, your turtleneck on backwards. Oh damn! Yeah, yeah I think that's what it is. Um. 
But damn, dog. No, the futures is going to be like eye toilets or something, where it's like Apple will drop like <laughs> yeah. some new thing. And yeah, I wonder I what's going to happen. It's, in it's the exciting future. to think about. Is it? Yeah. Yeah, I hope Apple's listening. If, if Steve Jobs' ghost is here, <laughs> we got to get out a fucking Ouija board. <laughs> Wake that motherfucker up, dude. Where's your eye toilet, you uh, fucking okay. dead guy? <laughs> <laughs> you just press a button and the meal leaves your stomach and yeah you put your it. phone like just put it right against your yeah. stomach and it just fucking absorbs it <laughs> and then it sends it right to brendan schaub's mouth <laughs> it just appears brendan schaub will be like oh like eating at some fucking stupid restaurant like he, <laughs> and, then he, and then just shit just fills his mouth like a fucking <laughs> italian chipmunk <laughs> just harboring nuts for Olé. the winter Oh, and he gets back in his leopard skin Miata that he bought for eight million dollars because he didn't doesn't know how to buy things. A Dude, when you child, when you every time you floor it in there, you can hear an endangered species die. I feel like <laughs> you can hear many special animals kill themselves. Yeah, dude, it runs on Ebola. <laughs> <laughs> Eboliata. That's the new fucking car Brendan drives. Um, no, but I think in the future, you, everyone will wear like a colostomy bag. You'll just empty it out. I think actually having to go to a room to like, because it's crazy when you think about it. I'm going to go off to a private room and get like uh, liquids or solids out of my body. It almost seems like you're like a bad magician. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's a trick that everybody knows. Mm. And the trick smells. Yeah, yeah. Like, if you pull a rabbit out of a hat, it doesn't smell unless the rabbit's dead. Yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't that, that be that great? That makes sense. But Bad magic, and it's just some guys pulling dead rabbits out of a hat. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> How is that not a show? There's every other fucking show on the air. It's so stupid. <laughs> I was, like, quarantining and shit back in the day. I can't even say that, which is weird. So, yeah, you left out of Columbus and what? I left out of Columbus and I didn't know what was happening. Like everybody else, I was like, what is happening? And, uh, you know, people were just, it was up in the air. And then uh, I um, went and just, they were like, you got to quarantine. So I came back to LA and got my shit. And then I went back to Minnesota where I'm from yeah. and quarantined in my sister's basement, which was a house that I, I, I bought her. Fucking so your basement. My basement. She, she, I remind her of that every time I step foot in that fucking place. Anyway, I'll digress on that. <laughs> but <laughs> it was just weird because then it was like there were murder hornets and like all this weird shit kept dropping. And then I love that the Pentagon revealed that they're aliens. They're like, no, there's proof. There's aliens. People are like, yeah, 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 cool. <laughs> anyway, what's going on with this disease? Like nobody cared about anything. Yeah. They dropped murder hornets on us. I don't even know what the fuck that is. Yeah, I feel like they kind of like it was a time where like they're going to slip other things out while people are heavily Yeah, distracted. totally. They're like, oh, they're looking that way. Dude, it's kinda, it, there's a lot of like distraction going on. Well, that comes to my point. So I was in quarantine and uh, I got in Minnesota. And what are you doing there? Are you working during the day? Are you doing anything? Are you doing email? I use my fucking mind. OK, so I just sat there and I read books and I uh, got caught up on Netflix shows and I journaled and I caught up with a lot of friends and I did some podcasts and shit or like phoners and stuff. But um, I just sat there and like really thought about my life and, uh, you know, what I wanted to accomplish in my next uh, chapter. Hard. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I didn't drink or anything. I was fucking sober Kai, dude. Wow. Yeah, I didn't fucking. You were living clean out there. Now, were you doing a gym? Were you elliptical in or anything? No, I just did push-ups. It was like a kind of a, it was like a, a were you prison with Netflix. It sounded like you were incarcerated. Yeah, it was a prison with Netflix. Your sister's upstairs. She's upstairs and my nieces and nephews and stuff. And I was like, just don't even, don't come in this sanctuary. Yeah. Yeah. And I took shits, I'm not going to lie. Yeah. And uh, the, the dog would run in and he would watch me poop. And then he would be like, all right, I'm, this is this is like the third time in like half yeah. hour. You're like, he's like, rerun. <laughs> yeah. And so then I got a, a message from Expedia. And they were like, are you ready for your trip to Key West? I had fucking forgot that I booked a trip to Key West <laughs> that December before COVID or anything. I was like, oh, I've always wanted to go to Key West. Yeah. And just kick it. You know, I read Hemingway. I like the show Bloodline. So oh, I yeah. went to Key West, Florida. I left there. And then I went to <laughs> South Carolina and hung out with Danny McBride for like a oh, week. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I love Danny. I almost moved there. He's like, you got to move here, dude. Yeah. And I almost did. But I went down to Key West and uh, I was going to go back up to South Carolina. 
but I stayed in Key West. I was supposed to be there for 10 days. I stayed for a year and a half oh. in fucking Key West. I was there a year and a half. Oh my That's God. not a joke. And what did, did you start like a, not a farm, but did you do like a um, job or something? Did you nope. get hired anywhere? Nope. What? I just tuned out. I was just, everything was so fucking bonkers in 2020 that I was just over it, dude. So I just stayed down there and it was so removed from everything like nobody gave a fuck i had no idea what day it was after yeah. a while when i just stayed i just kicked it were you partying were you sailing were you i partied initially and sailed initially yeah and then i just fucking had a couple fucking pops and then i would just yeah. listen to the song sailing yeah by christopher cross and that was a lot easier sailing, sailing yeah. takes me away and suck my own dick but uh no but it was awesome though like nobody was on twitter nobody was like yeah everybody was just like island life and i just fell in love with it and was it like um were you doing um any employment at all or you just <laughs> no, i didn't do shit i did nothing did you try to get a job did you fill no, out the application I, I was just over it i thought about some shit and i was like planning on coming home like and what then... like real estate or what were you considering no, I was going to, like, shave my pubes and just make dream catchers or some shit. Like, that's Ooh, what yeah. Key West is like. Like, after a year, I didn't even own clothes. Yeah. I just wore, like, butterflies. Is there government down there? I feel like it's just, like, basically you have people down there just, like, obviously these people hate Native Americans and everybody because they're they're trying to get out of America. Is there a lot of Cubans? Is it Latino there? What is it? It's kind of everything. I mean, it's local. It's, uh, I mean, it's, you know, it's a lot of tourists it's a big tourist spot you know right. so it's a lot of people driving from florida and there's a lot of fishing is there's it a lot of fishing and there's a lot of like snowbirds but it's funny because when i landed my buddy picked me up and he goes welcome to the island of misfit toys and i go what does that mean he goes you'll see and i didn't know what that meant and then after a little bit i was like oh yeah <laughs> like everybody's just going rogue dude <laughs> like everyone's got a story everybody that i met was like yeah, I came down here like on a connection with a flight and then I just stayed for like 20 years. <laughs> like it's just the best like relief. Yeah, I was on the airline. They lost my family. Like the airline lost your <laughs> family? Yeah, I was flying over Key West and then I decided, fuck, I'm just going to parachute out of this shit yeah. and just do, do, I open the door. But it was awesome. It was just, it was fucking crazy. I can't believe I was there that long. Wow. It was so fun. And, and I is, met the coolest people. All the locals are great. Really? Yeah. Now, is there a lot of, because you seem like a kind of place where people are sneaking out. They're getting, like, uh, a lot of times you see on American Greed, the guy ends up down in Key West. Is there, like, a lot of hidden, like, people that could have been doing murders or anything like that down there? I feel like it's a lot of, like, kind of, like, you'll never catch me type of people. I mean, you know, I didn't, I wasn't, like, a part of that scene. But I mean, I, it it exists. It's like the show Bloodline. Have you seen that? Well, I saw oh, half dude. the first episode. The first season is fucking dope. It is, but it's a lot of hiding bodies. I didn't see that. I mean, I hid a lot of big garbage bags that were really heavy, but yeah. I didn't look inside. Yeah. So it could have been. She I'm just gonna say it was a bunch of um, iguanas. <laughs> That's how I'm gonna visualize. Did it. you see like um? That speak English and yell help. Did you feel? <laughs> <laughs> Did you feel? I feel like it's a lot of people wearing eye patches, and a lot of people like, "Hey, if you knew what happened, you know, you'd be fine, lad. You couldn't. Your mother was a R, you know." I feel like it's like right. a lot of like. There is that. Like, there's like those bars. Yeah. Then there's like heavy tourist bars, and then there's. Uh, is there a Margaritaville? Um. Yeah, I'm almost sure there was. I never went to it. They have, like, the Margaritavilles, like, the Fat Tuesdays. Is there a Chico's? Is that Fat Tuesdays? What's the one that's, like, the big and tall clothing store? Obese Rick's. (laughs) Obese Rick's. Yeah. Yeah. No. Um, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Big and tall. Thick Don's. Yeah. (laughs) Thick Rick's. Hey, welcome to Thick Rick's. The guy's just fucking... (laughs) <laughs> he's like a mr potato head heavy on the potato you yeah know? Like, hey. <laughs> mr potato hey head you mind just pouring some ketchup on my body <laughs> they don't have, they don't have cologne they just have gravy yeah. they just fucking yeah oh what are you wearing uh that's a uh, sausage yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's some um, stouffer's new cologne <laughs> Yeah, why not? Oh, damn. No, but it's one of those places. Tyson that... does a deodorant? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. 
That's amazing. Oh my god, these condoms have real sheepskin in them. <laughs> it's chewy. Oh man. Oh no. The lamb here is great. Oh my god, this shirt has chocolate chips on it. <laughs> um, yeah, but it's one of those places where the dive bars. Like, I just didn't really go to them because it's kind of like you said. It's one of those things where I was told this, where you walk in and they're like. Who are you? Like eye patch fucking eye patches. Yeah, some guy takes his eye out of his mouth because it's wet. It's just gotten wet enough to put back in socket. Yeah, it makes it sound like because yeah. it's just been sweating. But yeah, but there's a lot of great bars. Sandbar is awesome. It's like the sports bar there. I was there a lot, and uh, it's just cool, man. And, and did you think cool. you were missing out on the world? Did you feel no? Like, I was... that's a big. I don't know anybody else that just kind of went to a place and was like, "This is what I'm gonna do." Yeah, I mean, I don't know who else did. I mean, I was there just chilling. But I, it was perfect because every time I would look at my phone or look at Twitter, it was just there was always something fucking bonkers happening. Like, no day was chill. And it would, like, stress me out. And I'm like, yeah. oh, God, uh, yeah. So then I was like, get me the fuck out of here. Were people down there, like, in? were they uh, – by? is it a lot of people trying to escape the pandemic? Was it people believing the pandemic? Was it a lot of, like, deniers, or was it just – what was what was the vibe down there? It was a lot of – you know, it's a lot of locals, and it's a lot of people that – you know, there were people that kind of believed it and kind of were, you know, not believed it, but, like, were like, oh, yeah, no, like, you got to be careful. Right. I mean, nobody was, like, reckless. You know, nobody was walking around – I mean, sneezing into a fucking megaphone. Yeah. But um, I don't even know what that sneezes would do. Sneezes straight into a baby's ass. You yeah, feel me? get that baby butt. <laughs> Sneezy Jefferson. But, uh, yeah, no, it was. Yeah. You it sneeze was, into him and his arms go like this. Yeah. Boink. And he just cries blood <laughs> out of his ears. Oh. No, uh, no, it was it was chill. But, like, you know, there was, you know, they took your temperature and people wore masks and. But a lot of people came to Key West to, like, get away from the masks. And is there, I hear there's a lot of, like, risque sex parties and stuff down there. Did you see any of that? I didn't see. I had heard stuff. But that's kind of one reason why I was intrigued. I'm not I'm not going to a, a sex party. Yeah. Because every party I go to is a sex party. Big. Game up. No. Um, like, a, just, I, I hear it's like a real semen Mardi Gras down there, you know? Like, that's kind of what you hear. There you are know? semen fights. Those really? break out at happy hour. Yeah, so it's just, you know, a lot of fucking spider webs. I'm the king of New York. <laughs> yeah. But, no, it wasn't as wild. But also, this is post-COVID. So pre-COVID, I heard it was a lot crazier. They have a thing called Fantasy Fest, mm -hmm. and they have stuff like that where they're like, dude, it's there's no rules. It's just completely insane. And is fantasy fest. Is it a gay festival? Cause it's, a, cause it's also, no, like it's like anything. It's a, it's a lot of like swingers. Like uh, that was kind of a vibe that I got. It's a lot of yes. people that are like down, like yeah. married couples from Ohio that came down for a weekend. Oh, they wheel in and that now brother. They're just, now they're wearing toilet seats and they have all, they always have some <laughs> brother shows up in a Tony Gwynn Jersey. And you're like, Oh, this yeah. dude, yeah, this dude. dude's getting on base. And then they're like, is that Minute Bowl? <laughs> yeah. And it just might be. Rest in peace to both those guys they've passed. Have they? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, at Fantasy Fest. They oh, just, They started coming all their organs out because they were fucking so much. <laughs> bleep, bleep, is that my spleen? That's my spleen? Bleep. That's my spleen? <laughs> yeah. Sir, you're an organ donor. <laughs> Thank you. You donated to my butt bank. Oh, yeah. Ching. Da, ding, dong. Um, wow. But yeah, it was great, man. And then I came back. It like kind of changed my whole view of everything. So I came back briefly to Los Angeles for a couple weeks to shoot a uh, commercial mm -hmm. and uh, just makes it a little. For fucking... what is it for? Boston Market? It was for Wendy's. Uh uh. Yeah, it was like uh, um, just only online. I love and that. then I went back to my place in LA and I got a condo. It's nice, you know, it's chill. And I looked at all my stuff, and I'm like, why do I have all this stuff? I don't need this shit. And I fucking got rid of, like, so much of my clothes, my shoes. I got rid of my, like, I had a Rolex. I had a diamond chain. I got rid of all of it. Damn. All of it. And I was just like, I don't need it. And that's what was cool about Key West is, like, I was there for that long, and I had maybe eight shirts, two pairs of shorts, flip-flops, and a pair of shoes. Damn. And I was happy as fuck, dude. I was like, why do I, I don't need all this shit? You know what I mean? It was really cool, and it really like 
made me realize how much when you just have so much shit. I got rid of my car five years ago. Yeah. And uh, the, the more stuff you have, I mean, I live in a neighborhood where I can walk everywhere, but. You know, the, I just got rid of shit. And it was just, I donated it. You know what I mean? And it felt cathartic, you're saying? It was cathartic. And it's like, if, you, if you're if you out there and you're listening, yeah, like, just look around your, you know, where look you live and just house. go like, do I need this? So, yeah. Need this? There was yeah, so much Yeah, you have a shit. backup blender. You don't need that. Yeah, you don't need yeah. a fucking fourth fax machine. Yeah. <laughs> you have 40 <laughs> bath towels. Yeah. Yeah, not too much. You have one body. Yeah, you have one body. Yeah. And I mean- People in Key West would be like, oh, yeah, dude, it's, you're still here. That's dope. And I go, yeah. And they're like, dude, do you need another shirt? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> and they're like, all right. And we would like barter. I'm like, here, here's my spleen. And I'd fucking jerk a spleen <laughs> into their fucking grill. But uh, yeah, it was just, it was. It and just were you really humming like, bats down there? Is it the kind of place where you're jerking off or you save that more for the mainland? What's going on down there? Be honest with me. With what? Because if I get to island, if I go out to an island, dude. I feel like the first thing I want to do when I get there is spray out, you know? Just uh, unleash the seed. Just bust 100, just, son. Yeah, I mean, I just It's I like a, it's jennies. almost like doing, it's like your own little Christopher Columbus. It's your own little, whatever that place is called, Chesapeake or whatever. Where'd they land at? Plymouth Rock. Plymouth Rock, dude. Yeah. No, I mean, it was. I played with my Jennies a couple times. I pretended like... My my balls were like an island, and then my yeah. dick was like a palm tree. <laughs> yeah. So I'd just squeeze it and then make the tree unleash a fucking blizzard. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I know I and fucking touched you, my jans. Was it? Um, it was just like whatever the fuck you want to do. It's like the movie Office Space, which okay. is great. If you haven't seen it, watch it. But there's a scene where Peter, um, played by Ron Livingston, gets hypnotized. He's like a nine to five corporate junkie. Yeah, I dude. remember that. And um, nine to five, dude. And, and he gets hypnotized yeah. and he goes into his zone and has this clarity. Oh, damn. And he just, the more he doesn't give a fuck, the more things happen to him oh, that are yeah. good. And there's a scene where his buddy goes, hey, man, Peter, wh what's going on with you? And Peter just goes, have you ever done nothing? It's so much better <laughs> than you think it is. And that's kind of how I was because I was. You know, I I started comedy when I was 19, and I was immediately on TV and toured my whole life. And I'm 45, and I was filming and touring and filming and touring, and I never just stopped and, like, took a breath. Because mm. everywhere I went, I would do shows. Right. So I was always kind of, it's a little stressful, you know? So it just was constant. So when I got there, I think that's why I stayed so long. Because I, I was just like, oh, I've never just been like, I don't want to go through my emails. I don't want to check Twitter. I don't want to go... I. Right. on facebook i don't want to do this i just want to like wake up wave to the fucking sun go get a co fucking cocktail go to the fucking beach it's right there it was just so awesome and the people were so great so cool so many cool people people struggle people struggle if you even look in the bible or if you look at uh even as old movies or anything you could definitely see a lot of people are struggling so it's not shocking that you might need help and if you can't get help in your area or if you don't want to go to a brick and mortar building because you might be nervous or scared, better help is available. That's right. Better help available worldwide. There's a broad range of expertise available. Better help. Give them a call. They'll assess your needs and match you with a counselor, a real counselor. Um, that's a licensed professional therapist. So it's not this is real deal. This is people that can help you. You can start communicating in under 48 hours. Visit BetterHelp.com slash T-H-E-O. That's Better H-E-L-P. And join the over 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health. In fact, so many people have been using BetterHelp that they are recruiting additional counselors in all 50 states. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp and TPW listeners. Get 10% off their first month at BetterHelp.com slash Theo. A lot of people wait to the end of the end of the world to get athletic or to take care of their health. You see somebody 90 years old, they going for a run. First run. Like, what are you doing, Brenda? What's up, Hank? Get out the street, dog. But times have changed, man. That's right. That's why you need the new Peloton bike. That's right. Working out never feels like a chore. There's always something new to discover. 
Peloton makes fitness entertaining and fun. And right now you can get $350 off the Peloton bike. It's their best offer of the year. Visit OnePeloton.com to learn more. That's O-N-E-P-E-L-O-T-O-N.com to learn more. $350 off the Peloton bike at OnePeloton.com. Terms apply. Did you learn anything about yourself kind of in that time? Because it is a real, because I, I, I get afraid to take a break sometimes, you know? Well, I mean, I learned that I, to decompress and to like take care of myself. And uh, also just, just, you know, I mean, like again, being 45, you know, the world just changed so much. Like we did, grew up without social media and grew yeah. up without all this shit and all this stuff. And like I said, like 2020, 2021 were just so it's just still insane but it's like it was just system overload essentially yeah so i was like when i was quarantined and i was stone sober i was like oh i, I want to go back to like reading and like just hanging out with like being with myself you know and not having stimulus and all these people and all this bullshit would you read you reading books zines what were you reading i read fucking zines Did i you? read books yeah I read, yeah, I can read. I think I used to read Outdoor American. Can you pull that up, Colin? Don't pull it up. Unlike Callan and Shab, I can read. There you go. Outdoor America right there. Budget set up for fall walleye. <laughs> go back to that. Go back to the dime with the walleye, huh? And what's the article at the top? Dude, look at you. You want to catch your brown eye. Hey, here we go. Huh? Yeah, that's the what's old, up, dude. That's what's up, dude. <laughs> <laughs> what? Ah, ah, ah. Squid. Uh, the old cold water crappy, huh? Oh shit. Wearing how to catch fall crappy, huh? Oh. Grab your crabs. Question of my life. And were, did you do any fishing tours down there? Yeah, I went out. Like everybody there has a boat. So, like, you want to go on the boat? And I love the ocean. I love the water. It's just that to me is really cathartic. Do you jump in the water when you get out there? Or you stay in the boat. No, I walk on the water. I'm Jesus. Oh, damn, yeah, really? of course I. <laughs> yeah, I, I get in the fucking water, dude. <laughs> it's a trip, dude. So you go out like way out, and you, it's still walkable. Yeah, like they're like sandbars. They yeah. call them. Damn. Yeah, it was. Chill. So you really lived it up. So at, at, was there a point where uh... I would take naps? Yeah, dude, oh, I'd take nice. like three naps a day. Oh, it was so awesome, dude. I took a nap. I think this is two days ago. Probably the first nap I've taken in couple years maybe it was so nice it was like only about 14 minutes but it was so nice i feel like it's hard to sleep at night it's easier to sleep get real good rest during a nap do you think that yeah i think i mean i've learned with all the stuff like i've got a holistic doctor and people like that you know turn me on to certain things and they were like listen to your body they were like listen if your body's tired you should fucking lie down you were just 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Yeah. You know, if you're hungry, like eat. You know what I mean? If your body's like, hey, I, I want to eat. Yeah. Like just grab a piece of fruit, grab some fucking veggies. Damn. Yeah. So what brought you back? Is there, now now that you're back in, in, in Los Angeles and in, in a mainland America, do you feel like there's anything that, like, was there stuff that you missed? Do you feel like you want to do more work do you feel like you want to go back there like what do you kind of feel now i wanted to i mean i wanted to retire i wasn't planning on coming home really and then i met i mean every day i would meet fans and take photos and they're all like what are you working on next you know when's your next stand-up special when are you touring again because all my oh. tour dates got canceled because of covid and uh i realized then i would go like ah, oh, i think i'm gonna retire and then people would the look on their face would be like what i'm like yeah, I don't know. I think I might just live here. And they're like, you can't do that. <laughs> and then, I, you know, like a lot of my friends and people were like, dude, you can't. You're fucking 44 at the time. You can't just <laughs> cash in now. And uh, they were like, you got to, like, keep going. And then I talked to my agents and shit. And they were like, yeah, where have you been? Yeah. <laughs> and I like you. They could hear parrots in the background and. I'm eating a tarantula. I don't even know what is going on. And uh, so they're like, just come home, dude. Just come on, man. You can't quit. And I had a, it was frustrating. So I had a new special before COVID. I had all this stuff. So I 
took a little bit more time and then I was like, I got to come home and then I got offered two movies. Wow. I start filming in February. You do. Yeah. And then I starting to do stand up again. And so I, I, I missed it. You know, what's the movie going to be about? There are two sequels. One is a sequel to a movie called The Binge, mm-hmm. which is on Amazon, which I, I had not seen it, but my friend was producing it and they offered me the sequel and I watched it and it's, it's, it's funny, dude. There's some oh. really funny shit. Vince Vaughn's in it. It's a really good cast. It's about the, like the movie The Purge. You know mm-hmm. that? It's like a big franchise. Oh, yeah, of yeah. I saw The Purge. Where one day you can like kill, kill and rob people. and shit. Yeah. This one is it's a, in the future and it's like the world is sober. And one day everything's legal. Every drug, alcohol, everything's legal. Damn. Yeah. So it's like. What would you do if you had one day? Uh, and then we'll get to this question that came in. If you had one day, what would you do where everything's legal? What would I do? Yeah. What drug wise? Yeah, or anything. If anything was legal, everything is kind of legal. I mean, if you get away with it, no. I mean, I don't know. I'm not gonna rob a house or kill. I don't know. I mean, I don't think I could. You'd kill have anybody. to kill. I mean, you gotta kill something. You know, it's not that hard these days to find somebody to kill. I don't think. I would probably. I don't. I, I couldn't. Kill My friend killed somebody. Uh, by choice. Or he just made an oopsie. I mean, it's, you know, I'm not trying to... Somebody uh, fell on a gun. It's. I mean, I'm not trying to, like, you know... Oh, God. Well, no, you already opened the can of worms, but, you know... Guy we'll, we'll raked let... himself... Oh, some guy accidentally raked himself to death in his own <laughs> yard. That's interesting. He just punched his dick into his ass until he bled out. Oh, Jesus <laughs> Christ. Merry Christmas. Bring that image home to your family. Oh, bro, there's been times where I just wanted to climb into my own ass, man. Yeah, you know? I, that's what I mean. I did that in Key West. And just disappear. Yeah, you just hide in a little fucking warm cave. Yeah. And just reach out with one hand and cut the lights off like that. Yep. Hold it. Just hold it over the hole. <laughs> yeah. Um. But yeah, so I'm doing that. And then a sequel to a movie I did called uh, The Buddy Games. Me and Josh DeMel and Dak Shepard, Olivia Munn. It, oh, it, was a big, uh, it was a big hit. It's on okay. video on demand. And you can, it's on a bunch of streaming oh, We'll things. never see it. But no, I bet it was good. You will. <laughs> but uh, no, we'll see no, it on an airplane, probably. I feel like people it's most rated R, bro. Do you feel like it's interesting how movies now have kind of disappeared a little? It's like since the theaters are gone, it's different. Um, yeah, but they're coming back. I mean, I'll, I'll, movies are still. I mean, they're. I feel bad because a lot of the movies that were like huge movies, um, like Dune and Ghostbusters, and there was like a handful of them that are being released, but. You know, it just it fucking was a cock block. So my movie Buddy Games was supposed to be in the theaters, and we got C blocked. Uh-huh. But check it out. I will check out Buddy Games because I like I like a title like that. Buddy Games. It's fun, dude. Yeah. So we're doing a sequel to that. So I'm filming. February I would love that, Friday dude. Friday. I could see you doing like a a good movie for you. I think would be doing like something with armadillos or like night animals. I've been offered that a lot. Really? Yeah. This is they've offered me armadillo the movie armadillo. Um, the horror movie, a horror movie. Are you joking around? No, man, I don't joke about armadillos. A lot of no. people do. You could, you, you think you could? I uh, offered a porno armadillo. Oh, did you really? <laughs> Damn, dude! Yep. It just comes out at night, mm-hmm. right into your bum. Yep, comes out while you're sleeping. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. It's and it's the size of an arm. Oh, it is. It has a watch around its neck. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> dude, that is some flavor, flavor right there. Bro, you know armadillos can jump really high. Can we get a video of that, please? Okay, there's the fucking armadillo. Look at that bad girl, huh? Shorty thick, huh? Don't they? Don't they? <laughs> she looks Mexican, kind of, with her hair like that. <laughs> what? Don't they have like, um, like scales or something? What's on their back? Don't they fold up into a ball? Uh, yeah, they do. Cause I was at a park and I picked it up. And I thought, <laughs> and I dunked it, and then it, this thing died. It un- it, un- it unveiled itself. Look at that Dillo. I think they go by Dillo, huh? Yeah, that's a, what Diplo, the DJ, he used to be called Dillo because he's an armadillo, I think. Oh, I could see him being What's at, that at that joke. They're guy? very nocturnal. Uh, can we see uh, <laughs> the video of the jumping armadillo, please? Yeah, that was what we wanted initially. Not the fucking thing eating leaves or vagina. I can't, is it standing up? That's a man. That's a walker. Oh. That's how bad my vision is. Ooh! Ooh! She tased its pussy? 
Huh? I don't know. That thing definitely. Somebody. Dude, she chased the labia. That thing got a tater salad enema right there. You saw that? Dang, <laughs> yeah, bro. Dude. Somebody freaking got dipped in the freaking, got a little bit of bowl slaw, dude. Oh, we got an armadillo <laughs> right here, y'all. Check it out. I'm going to slow down so we can look at it. Look at this. Okay, pervert. check this out. I got this air horn right here. Oh, that's not cool. Uh -uh. I'm going to see what happens when I blow it at the armadillo. I can't see what that happened. Funny. Oh my god, go back. <laughs> Can we zoom in on the screen some? Right here. I'm gonna see what happens when I blow it at the armadillo. <laughs> what is about the damn that was dude? Funny. My god, that's Why does cute. that too? You know, like... in the future they're, they're they're doing a thing now, and the future is now, and they're doing a thing where a lot of armadillos they're getting the scales off of them, so it's just the body. And you Why? can, because people can have them more as pets. Isn't that unbelievable? The way that they're starting to. Why don't they just get a cat? They don't want that. They have to have an armadillo? You fucking, what are these idiots? Who are these people? <laughs> I don't know, rich people probably. People making your movie probably. Brendan dude. Schaub has probably <laughs> a fucking kennel of our fucking dillos. What a fucking idiot. Oh, I'm sure Rogan He's probably has painting a them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Rogan has a fleet. He's got I'm an army. I'm sure he has a couple. We had a question, another question about Hollywood that came in. What else do we got? What up, Theo? What up, Swarty? Yo, what up? Morning from Phoenix, Arizona. Yeah, the Phoenix. Just had a little quick question. Uh, who's more fun to work with, Jennifer Aniston or David Spade? To me, they're kind of both equal on the looks, both pretty good looking. Yeah. Aniston seems sneaky funny, though. Spade's obvious funny. Okay, so, that's maybe, a, depending on the mood you're in. But uh, there we go. That's let me good. Know, Swarty. Thanks, dude. I love that you call, call me Swarty. That's my nickname, dude. I love uh, that that guy. A looks like me if I were a little handsomer, right? And um, that guy moved to Arizona. Very, he's living kind of a Joe Dirt existence. Kind of. Did you right. catch that at all? Yeah, I caught a little bit of dirt there. Moved to Arizona. He for sure. Has a Which is where he's Spade a, is from. He's got a Dillo necklace. Oh, um, Spade and Anison. Uh, interesting question. They are both very different. You're accurate on Anison being sneaky funny. She's very funny. Um, she's got better hair than David. Oh yeah, and hers um, is very majestic. David smells like Funyuns. Mm, yeah. Okay. But David is very funny. So, yeah. But I'm I'm gonna give Aniston the edge, because you well you, when you're in a scene with Aniston, you're eye to eye. When you look at David, you've got to look down. Mm. And he's kind of like a lawn gnome. Oh, he's got that downhill vibe. Yeah, but in a nice way, like a nice, funny little little lawn gnome. What but, about um? Were you down there when Norm passed away? Yeah, that was awful. Norm was one of my best friends. That was awful. Really? Yeah, that was my buddy Todd calling. I woke up from a nap, and I look at my phone. It's my friend Todd. I'm like, hey, what's up? He goes, ah, were you just taking a nap? And I go, yeah, what's up? Mm. He goes, ah, you haven't checked your phone, have you? And I go, no. And he goes, Norm MacDonald died. And I go, what? No. And he goes, yeah. And it was one of the few times in my life I just hung up the phone and immediately started sobbing. Mm-hmm. And I sobbed for like a half hour. I just completely oh lost it. God. He was like really like one of my close friends. And it was like cutting fucking, weight for a fight, huh? It was awful, dude. It was just. And then I found out like he had cancer for a long time. Didn't tell anybody. And it it was hard. It's still really hard. Everyone's pretty shook by it. Do you remember the last time that you had seen him? Um, I hadn't seen him for a while. But uh, the last time I saw him was at like at a bar by our place. And uh he would watch. He was a big gambler. Mm -hmm. But um, the last time I talked to him, I was when I was quarantined in Minnesota, he would, uh, I'd text him and I'd go, hey, what's up, dude? And he goes, ah, what? Who's this? And I, he would do this all the time. I go, it's fucking Nick, dude. And he goes, ah, Nicky, what, uh, what are you doing? And I'm like, nothing, I'm quarantined. And he goes, ah, you didn't stand up here. And I'm like, no, the fuck? I wasn't doing stand up. And he goes, What uh what's your plan? And I go, I don't know, I'm gonna kick it here and then I think I'm gonna go to Key West. And I go, I might just retire though and just move to Reno and just get like a residency and then I'll just live in Reno. 
and just work there. Just be like an old comic. Yeah. And he goes, I swear to God, he goes, ah, oh, that's, a, that's a good idea. And I go, yeah, I don't know, whatever. He goes, ah, no, nah, uh, maybe I'll join you. We'll both uh, headline Reno. And I go, dude, Reno's fucking a mess. I go, no, I don't want to do that. So I go to Key West. A month later, he calls me. He goes, hey, uh, what are you doing? And I go, I don't know. I'm in Key West. What's up with you? And he goes, uh, when are you going to Reno? And I go, dude, that was a joke. I'm not moving to fucking Reno and retiring as like a comic. And he goes, ah, oh, fuck. I thought, oh, I thought it was a good idea. And I'm like, no. And so that's the last time I talked to him. And then his... Wow. Um, close, close for his closest friend, Lori Joe. Mm -hmm. I hit her up after Norman passed and I was like, Hey, are you doing okay? And she goes, one of the last things before Norm died, one of the last things he talked about was moving to Reno with you. No. Yeah. And I go, are you serious? She goes, yeah. He was like, he really wanted to do that. And I was like, Oh, and then that made me cry again. And, uh, yeah, it was just, that was Norm. It was just really, it was awful. Damn. I'll tell you, uh, I have so many Norm stories, but this is one of my favorites. And um, I was on tour, me, Sandler Spade, Rob Schneider, and Norm was kind of like the wild card. He would pop in for certain dates. So we're and uh believe Mohican Sun in Connecticut, and we're backstage. Everyone's in Sandler's green room talking, shooting the shit. And me and Norm are in the hallway hanging out. And um, I don't know why I did this. Uh, this long hallway, and this guy walks in. Uh, way down the hallway, he walks in the door. And I'm like looking and, you know, we're always kind of suspicious about people that come backstage. And I go, I think that guy's a gun. And uh, Norm goes, what? <laughs> and I go, I, th I think that guy's a fucking gun, dude. And he's like, oh, my God. And he runs into Sandler's room and he goes, there's a gun. There's a man with a gun. And I was like, no, 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 there's not. There's not. I was no, 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 I'm joking. There's not. And he goes, no, no, no. Next time there's a guy with a gun. And Sandler goes, what the fuck? He's like, I have the fucking gun. And Spade's like, oh, no, what the fuck? What's going on? And I'm like, no, there's no gun. There's no gun. I just, there was, I, I was making like a joke just for Norm. And Norm's like, what? How is that a joke? And I'm like, I don't, I don't know. And Sam was like, Sam was like, what the fuck is wrong with you? And I'm like, I don't know, man. Spade's like, yeah, real cool, man. And I'm like, I'm just going to go to my room. And Norm's like, yeah, I thought there was a gun. I'm sorry. Nick, Nick sent it. And I'm like, Good lord. Real buzz and the, kill. And huh? the guy walked past and was a security guard. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. So he really did have a gun. He didn't have a gun, but he just looked like somebody that would have a gun. Yeah, well, people use guns for security, man. It was just not a good joke on my part, especially <laughs> poor Norm. Did you guys yeah. ever work together or not? We did those shows together, and we did like. Oh, I got a Norm story too. Um, mm. You know. We never like we're on stage together, like yeah. fucking Bonnie and Clyde or whoever duo. Dude, is. I was at uh, I don't think it's is it Bonnie and Clyde. I don't know. Um, Clyde. Drexler. Oh, you can hear our security guard. He's one of the shitter. Oh, dude, yeah, you can. Hear Bro, him. he had. I don't know if he eats at like a um trough or something, but he has the worst. Who normal security guard? Bowel movements. The security guard here. And he's a parking attendant, but his shirt says security. I'm like, that's a. Yeah. That's, well, that's sounds a like reason. no one's safe from that bathroom. <laughs> yeah. But he's in there about probably. If I go in there, he's, out, he's in there one out of two times when I go. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, so he has a problem. Yeah. Yeah. He needs an armadillo. Oh, he Clog needs. Clog up that drain. <laughs> yeah, he does, dude. He does. No fucking scales. <laughs> Just clean. Oh, yeah. No scales, baby. This bitch is clean, boy. Damn, I got my baby a damn freaking scaleless dilla, baby. <laughs> God damn. I can't. That, is that if a that, real thing? I'm looking at People want scaleless armadillos. You bet I'm looking at titty tonight, son. <laughs> damn, boy. <laughs> Woo -woo. I'll, I'll eat half my own asshole, son. I'm fucking. <laughs> if I'm looking at scaleless dilla, son, it's on, baby. Fuck. It is on, bro. I will fucking eat a pecan out of my cousin's ass, baby. You feel me? Let's on go. On Christmas morning. Let's go, Elvis Presley. Um, you think you could do a good Elvis Presley impersonation? I, mean, I could make an attempt. All right. I don't know if I would ever use it on anything. I'll have a bleed. All right. Yes. 
she? Who let the dog out? Who let the dog out? I just got me a normal deal to work. And then he dies. He goes into a stroke. Oh, damn, yeah, dude. That's a dark impression. And that's, uh, who is that? That's Benedict Cumberbatch? Who is that? Yeah, that was Benedict Cumberbatch doing Elvis Presley. Um, and that was Steven Seagal. And that was Aaron Gonzalez? Was that your Aaron Gonzalez impersonation? Yeah, that's wow. correct. Go Pats. Yeah. Um, no, so I went to, I had to go to this casino one time with Norm, right? Oh, God. And Is he gambling then? No, he was playing on the show. Adam Egit was there, and I somehow got booked in the feature, right? Mm-hmm. So Norm's headlining. I felt like Norm was on pills, or he was wet, a little bit lit. But I don't know if that's true. Some people say he never did any drugs. I don't know. He seemed like he was he, off. He, 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 he took pills. But he could have been, yeah. He could have just been having a... This was like... Well, he, he had cancer for a while. When right, was so who knows? Uh, I don't even know. So, but this is when I was alive and, you know, in my past. So what happened was I go on stage and I ran the light, right? I Not was cool. like... Not cool, but yeah. And it was literally in a barn, like, attached to a casino. Like, the place where you could hear, like, there were, like, live births. Like, there was a lot going on, you know? Oh, from animals or people? Be- I mean, who knows? You know, thick things. You just heard the sludge. Oh, you heard... You heard some pussy sludge. You heard... You let the bodies hit the floor. There was nobody catching these things that were being born, right. you know? It was just a lot of uh, skinny... Free falling. They were free falling. Yeah. And then they would hit the ground. A lot of skinny puppy, you know? Oh a lot of babies God. that were fart-powered. Oh, yeah. Oh, right. yeah. That's my son, you know? Oh, a little robo-fart? Just that kind of... So, who books this gig? Helen Keller? <laughs> so, anyway, he goes out there, and he's he is... Like, you can barely even hear him. It's bad. He's just kind of garbling. His words, right? Right. So, anyway, the next day, we're all downstairs. Jerry Mathers is there, too. <laughs> okay. What? Well, no. I swear. Jerry Mathers is Beaver from Leave it to Beaver. Bring up a picture of Jerry Mathers, please. Also, that's a real show for all the kids out there. Leave it, it to Beaver? Leave it to Beaver. Yeah. And Beaver was like the rascal son, right? Or- oh, all show- old shows are porns now, right? There he is, right there. God. Yeah. And uh, what the fuck was he doing? Giving birth? <laughs> he was like to Eddie Haskell. I mean, bro, he Is that was the same show. And yeah, and Eddie Haskell died recently. R.I.P. Very sad. But uh, gang violence. Uh, I'm not sure what it was. I think it was Miss. He lived in a nice neighborhood. I think it was Miss Applebaum or whatever. He whoever the teacher was, that he was always at odds with. You know. Yeah. Miss Crab Apple or whatever it was. But anyway, uh, so I get up. I I I get up there. Um. Oh, in the morning. Oh, so Mathers is there, right? And I said to him, I was like, he's, he's like, I was just talking to him. I was a huge fan. I had signed, I bought an autographed picture of him when I was a kid. Right. I had it on my wall at home. I had a Jerry Mathers autographed picture on my wall at home. That is gross. Because his name was Theodore and my name Theodore. Oh, that's right. What so I was just Theodore? keyed in, right? So anyway, uh, God, I wish this story would end. Um, you were so, like leave it to Sleazer, dude. He had his so picture anyway, on, fucking thrown on your fucking eggnog. On he his goes, face. "Where do you live?" I said, "I live in Santa Monica." He goes, "I used to get some pussy in Santa Monica." Oh. That's exactly what he said, bro. Jeez. So right there, I'm a little shook. I'm excited, you know. I'm still excited that it's him, but I'm a little shook. Right. But anyway, in the morning, Norm's downstairs. We all have to play in this poker tournament. That's part of the weekend deal, the package. And Norm's like, man, a lot of hot chicks here, huh? And I'm looking around, and it's like nobody's that nobody's hot in this area, right? There hasn't been anybody hot here. If somebody here were hot, you would know about it immediately. They'd right. be on a calendar. They would be on the news. Yeah, they would be on the news. Yeah, <laughs> dead or alive. <laughs> yeah, they would be on the news, bro. <laughs> Yeah, if a decent strand of jeans <laughs> passed through this town, the fucking fire alarms would go off, right? <laughs> there has not been. They would be up from the news to a milk carton in like a week. There has not been a a, a unique strand of GTAC to roll through this area <laughs> in fucking since fucking so what? No, Norm was definitely on pills if he was like looking around. <laughs> right, like, right. Ah, there's some, uh, some gen- tail here. Yeah, yeah. So I thought he was serious right because i don't really know him 
I'm like, yeah, man, there definitely is. And then he goes, fuck no, there isn't. <laughs> and it just shook me. That's, that's so him. That's amazing. <laughs> he, like, baited me into believing that he was. Yeah, went, and then what? fucking pulled the rug yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. Dude, he was fuck like, no, there isn't. It's so hard because you never know. I mean, I was one of his good friends for a long time. I'm talking like 15 years. Wow. And I still was like, I could kind of gauge, but sometimes I was like, what is he saying? Right. But he uh, he he was out of his out of this world. And he, did he chase a lot of women? Did he have a wife or anything? No, I never met a wife. He has a son, Dylan, who's really cool. So he must have did sex once at least. I mean, I never saw he was addicted. To, he was a big gambler, dude. Really? Yeah, he, loved he loved gambling. gambling. And but he he had a bit. He <laughs> he always had so many gay jokes, but I never knew him to be gay or anything. But he had a joke. He was on Letterman. And uh, or no, it was Conan, and he goes, he is promoting his book, and he goes, yeah, it's not a memoir, but uh, you know, it's just uh, it's a book, and he goes, uh, you know, it's, I don't talk about being deeply a deeply closeted gay man, <laughs> and Conan goes, what, you're gay, and he goes, what, no, why'd you say that, and he goes, well, you just said, he goes, no, I'm a, I'm deeply closeted, <laughs> and he goes, so you're not gay, he's like, no, no, I'm straight as an arrow. He goes, and then he goes, and I'm paraphrasing, forgive me, but he goes, you know, deeply closeted means the guy who's gay, but he's so gay, he won't admit it. He hides it. And uh, he's like, yeah, no, I'm straight. <laughs> it was such a fucking good bit. Again, I fucking um, paraphrased it, but it's on YouTube. That's funny, man. Yeah, he was great. Yeah, I, st- I watched one of his clips and he was on, I think, The View. Did you see that clip? <laughs> no. When they're trying to get him to like, He's, he's trying to be very realistic. The show's like ultra liberal and he's just trying to be just a realist. Like, um, yeah, that's how he was. Yeah. And they're like, they won't, they're like, you'll never be back on this show. They're all joking about it and stuff. And he, well, he wouldn't because he wasn't like just kind of conforming to whatever, like, I don't know, just some ridiculous story. Why would they like, have him on? I don't know. That's so weird. Like he's so not, I well, can see him doing it. Like if they offered it to him, but I can't. Here we go. Let's get a little bit of it. That uh, uh, the Democrats don't steal the election from the uh, the winner, you know. But who knows? <laughs> you like George Bush, don't you? I love George Bush, man. He's a good man, decent. You know, uh, none of this. <laughs> yeah, he's uh, you know he's not a, a liar, or a crook, murderer, or anything like that. So it'd be good to get the. See, I I don't I think we should get the homicide out of the White House and get like a. Uh, a fresh start, because we don't want any more murderers. I think no, we, we should just go on to the next question. Oh. Who are the murderers? Yeah, yeah. Oh, Clinton, he murdered a guy. Yeah, you know, we're not allowed <laughs> no, to, you're not no, allowed no, to put out no, no accusations without That's a little Charlie. too That's far. That's the way it does let's work. Just, let's just go on to the next question. <laughs> uh, yeah. This is not my week, what can I tell you? <laughs> oh, it's not mine either, and I'm being very nice, okay? <laughs> Be a good boy. Now, Norm. Do you never hear that? No, listen, no, we don't need I to don't want to get into that. this, and I don't want to hear it, and this is not the place to make those accusations. And you're supposed to be funny. Oh. Let's get on there. Exactly. Get with it. There you go. This is a live show. Not Why? Norm, but you have been properly chastised by Barbara, oh. so I'm not going to ask the next question. I thought it was a matter of record. Shut no. up. Uh, no, shut <laughs> up. Just saying. Look, hey. let me do this, okay? They don't even want to talk about the fact that maybe the guy murdered somebody. All right. Yeah. Man, manslaughter. <laughs> <laughs> He's doubling down. Yeah, don't have Norm doesn't play by rules, dude. That's hilarious. You know, cash back credit cards, it's becoming a thing of the past. Bitcoin, that's the future. That's what they're saying. BlockFi has the world's first Bitcoin rewards credit card that lets you earn an unlimited 1.5% in Bitcoin on all qualifying purchases. Whether you're a crypto pro or a total beginner, you can finally earn Bitcoin the easy way with the world's first Bitcoin rewards credit card from BlockFi. Yep, that's it. Wish you got into Bitcoin sooner? BlockFi can help. Right now, our listeners can get a bonus of $25 in crypto after you make a first purchase with the credit card when you sign up at BlockFi.com slash Theo. That's B-L-O-C-K-F-I dot com slash t-h-e-o 
You have a family member, a friend, a wife, a second wife, and they like that crypto, hit them with this, daddy, get that item. Start earning Bitcoin back on your qualifying purchases today. Not all will be eligible. Geographic, regulatory, and underwriting restrictions apply. Fees and terms subject to change. Additional term of service at BlockFi.com. BlockFi is a financial technology company. Bank and service provided by Evolve Bank and Trust, member FDIC. All your loved ones really want for the holidays is to see you or to uh, or to just to have a connection, you know. And that's why a, an aura frame can help. Um, with your aura frame, you can give them access to your frame so they can upload pictures to you. Um, so you can be walking down the hall and bam, you see Margaret you know, uploaded them hooters or, you know, a nice beach shot. Or you see Angelica or somebody, Frank, uh, put a picture of the kids, bam, and there's a video and a surprise and bam, and it's suddenly part of your life. And they did it without you even knowing. So there's a really cool aura to it, I guess, to be just right on the nose. Last year, Aura Frames completely sold out, so don't wait. Visit Aura, A-U-R-A, frames.com and get gifting now that's a-u-r-a frames.com listeners use code weekend to get 30 percent off aura's best-selling digital picture frames i think comedians don't kind of do you think that there's a thing like i noticed this the other day i was driving with a friend of mine and there was the traffic was all backed up right right and i just go around like it's the interstate like there's you know 700 cars in line i just Go to the outside area where it's not a street, you know? Yeah. And just go. And my friend's like, I just think that he's a comedian. This guy, John Chris, and I, I, he's like, I think that's just what comedians do. He's like, I think you just see, you don't want to do whatever the conformity is, you know? Yeah, I mean, I think that's initially like how how it, um, Some the genesis of comedy is going against the grain. Like when right. I was in school... When I was a kid, I just would go rogue right. to make people laugh, you know. So it, you're going against the grain and authority in that sense. And some, you know, I think a lot of comedians, even if they don't do it on stage, they, you know, they kind of go rogue. Yeah. But I mean, that's how I was, and that's when I was in Key West, again for a year and a half. People were like, like I'm of the ilk of like if somebody tells me I can't do something, I'll be like, fuck you. Yeah. So when people are like. Well, you, you can't just stay in Key West. And I go, yeah, I can do whatever the fuck I want. And all these people are doing that. And I'm like, you know you're making it way worse when you keep telling me that I can't do that. <laughs> and I just, my family and my friends are like, so I mean, I don't understand. So you're just going to just stay there? And I'm like, if I want to, yeah. Like, yeah, fuck you. Yeah. I'm fucking doing whatever I want with my life. You know, I'm not hurting anybody. I'm like just chilling on an island. Do you, uh, so do you. Fuck you. Do you think you'll retire there? Do you have a retire spot? Is a retire like a real thing? I mean, I might. Yeah, I really loved it. I really, really loved it. And it was cool. They said a really nice thing to me. Because like after a while, you know, at first people were like, Nick Swartzen, what the fuck are you doing here? Yeah. And there was a bar. And they had like a celebrity like Wall of Fame. And they had pictures of people who had been there. And I was like, oh. And I'd been in Key West for a while. And I go, hey, do you want want my picture? And the guy who manages it goes, no, man. And I go, what do you mean? He goes, because you're just Nick. You're a friend Nick. We don't look at you like a uh, actor or comedian. You're just our buddy Nick. Mm. And he goes, everybody kind of thinks that on the island. Like, you're just Nick. And it was, like, really cool. And, like, that's why I loved it. And, like, I'd walk down the street and people would be like, hey, Nick. And I'm like, hi. <laughs> it's, like, awesome. That's cool, man. And they have a lot of dogs, which I like. Like, they let bar like dogs in bars. Yeah. So you seemed- go to, like, a bar and there'd be, like, seven dogs. It'd be so exciting. And if you can't even talk to anybody or if somebody's just you can't, somebody's just impossible to talk to, you just pet, start petting stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I knew people's dogs' names more than I'm their sure. names. I'm sure. Which is weird. And is it, did you feel any of that? I feel like it's just, I, I heard also there's no beach there. It's not, like, a good beach in Key West. Is that true? There's not. Uh, like a great beach. What the there's, fuck, there's like bro. one or two. How do you have are... be Key West and not have a beach though? And no, it is weird, and that's kind of a misconception. Because I was the same way. I'm like, where the fuck? Like you can make where's the beach, beach, bro? Where's the thigh tied? Huh? Well, the, the big thing Ready is to see some fucking hips slam against each other. Oh yeah, I know what you're saying, man. You know, I'm that's I showed up, and I'm like, where's that fucking? 
What are them fucking pussy rafts? I'm ready to sniff some fucking bunk out here. Yeah, I'm gonna, <laughs> I want to fucking shoot a cumbrella. <laughs> Just fucking shoot it up and everybody gathers on the fucking beach. Oh, yeah. But no, it's a it's a lot about going out on the boat. That's where like the big thing is. And okay. you go out to sandbars and there's beaches out there. And so like boating is a big thing. Everybody's got a boat and they got a golf cart to so you travel by golf cart. Oh, I like that. Which is fucking dope as shit. And is there a lot of nudism out there? I also hear it's like a nudist colony. Is there some of that? No. It's not a nudist colony. Could you do it? One of my sisters did drugs one time and climbed up to a nudist colony on accident. She was mountain climbing with a friend. She said she was. She was on drugs, but um That's those should not go together. <laughs> drugs and mountain climbing. And they climbed up to some place. <laughs> what drug was it? You know, I mean, if it's cocaine, you're like, oh, then I don't know. I could. I, just I, like, I think it was a smokable drug, but not weed. So something. But um, she goes, uh, and she, yeah, and she doesn't even tell like a funny story. She's like, we went climbing, and next thing you know, we had to have lunch at that <laughs> nudist colony. Apparently, they got to like a some place where they had like some nudes up there. Some you know, on people. top of a mountain, or like at a uh flat area that's along like by a mountain you know what i'm talking about a prolapsed asshole <laughs> i mean yeah it could be i think that's what it's called <laughs> damn the old p-lapse huh that's fucking weird so did they have to get naked uh i don't think so she i think fucking they... did i bet she did if she was high on some fucking jerry mathers Ugh. fucking shit dude she was fucking higher hopefully she had that little front skunk out you know what i'm saying bro what is that? I don't know. This is my sister. Can we not talk about this? Dude? You fucking brought her up, dude. You're Fuck fucking you. drug. You're drug addict extreme. You're the one who's trying to climber. leave the country to an island that's not even an island. What do you mean trying? I went to the fucking thing, and it is an island, but they built a bridge so yeah. people from Miami can fucking OD. Yeah. <laughs> it's not an island, then, man. It's an island, dude. An island you can't get there, bro, unless you meet a man who fucking runs a smoothie business and has a boat, dude. Dude, dude now you're man islanding. It's like mansplaining, but it's fucking. Oh, why does a man have to take you there? That could be. Why can't You're it right. be a lesbo? I'm sure there's some hardy men, dude. I uh, let's see if another video question came in. Anything else here we got for Nick? See, I'm gone two years, and now I'm not in demand anymore. Oh, we got a ton of them. Oh, look at fucking Gary. Is this written out? Yo, Nick, to the power of two. I just wanted to ask you guys, what was the most influential sports moment you guys have seen either live or on television that really got you up out of your chair, got your vocal cords going? Um, for me, it was the Seattle Seahawks beating the Packers uh, in the NFC Championship in like overtime. But they don't win anymore, so it's kind of hard to... Um, I got a little chatty right at the end, but seemed like a nice Anyways, guy. Gang, gang. Thank you, Kyle Rittenhouse. Kyle's the dude that's going to, like, wait, no, his name, is his name Kyle? I think so. That guy um, it seems like the dude who's like, when you're too drunk at the party, he's like, I'm not drinking, man, I'll take you home. Yeah. He'll give you a ride. He's like sober cab, dude. Yeah, that, that's a compliment. That's like safe friend, dude. Yeah. That's safe friend. He's the guy who would get murdered by somebody for being a nice guy, you know? Yeah, he's the guy that like, oh, that guy's got a flat tire. And then they pull over to help him, and then the tire yeah. iron just goes. Next thing you know, gang, 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 <laughs> yeah. and his jaws fucking in Alcatraz. Yeah. Next thing you know, you got a flat heart, bro. <laughs> you <laughs> you got a flat heart rate. Just Your brain just ran out of air, dude. <laughs> <laughs> you got PSY, dude. dude. Nobody fucking knows Don't why you're dead, bro. Try to flex bro. seal this shit, yeah. dude. <laughs> I just put a can in on the way here, man. Did you really? I have 50 PSI right now in one of my tires. That bitch is ready to bust. Oh, dude. Yeah. Yeah, boy. Oh, to answer your question. Um, the last time I lost my mind, I was in, oh, uh, in Denver when I was supposed to do those shows. And I was at the bar at the hotel. And I'm watching the Vikings play the Saints in the playoffs. I'm a big Vikings fan. I'm Minnesota. Mm -hmm. And, uh. They fucking did that crazy catch, Casey Keenum to Stefan Diggs. And I the bar was full and nobody's watching the game because it's Denver. So I'm watching it and I'm like, oh my God. And then I I've rarely done this. I just started screaming and I fell down on my knees mm -hmm. and I put my hand over my head. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh my God. And I started to tear up. And then everybody thought that I was having like a problem, like a heart attack. Oh. Or like an aneurysm. Oh, yeah. So people are like, whoa, whoa, man, hey, hey, hey. And then the bartender, who I know, I've stayed there for fucking ever, 
And he was like, no, 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 he's from Minnesota. They just scored like a crazy fucking play, like all time insane. And everybody's like, oh, Jesus. And I was like, no. I just lost my shit. I really lost it. That's one of the biggest I've lost. What about you? You're a Saints fan, aren't you? Aren't you Saints? <laughs> Are you Saints? <laughs> I can't hear you. <laughs> my other favorite was against the Saints, <laughs> and Kyle Rudolph called it a touchdown. And I don't know you want to get. <laughs> <clears throat> that hey, was, who that, dude? <laughs> who that? That's a guy. That's a guy in your living room. The next week, and then the Vikings blow it, so it all evens out. Um, I, you know what? I was pretty burned. That was one of the worst moments ever as a Saints fan, for sure. Because yeah, that had to be awful. I paused the game for the fourth quarter. For like, it was literally I think three and a half minutes left. And I stopped the game because I had to do my podcast because I had to get it out for the next day, right? Right. So towards the end of the, I figure I'm just going to watch the end of the game when I get done. We're up by ten, you know. We're up by yeah, ten. Yeah, you up. And you guys had the ball, so I was like, "Oh, we got this. We're going to move on to the next round." And then my brother called. I saw him kept calling, so I actually put the call into the episode. And I was like, "What's going on?" He's like, "Man, you just..." You're not going to believe this. And we'll, we might even be able to, maybe we can put the clip in. If we do, it'll be right here. But he's like, they did some type of play and the angle the defensive guys had. It just, and we lost the game. And I'm like, how did we fucking, it was impossible and to And you lose. went to your DVR and we're like, hello, darkness, my old friend. Well, we didn't even do a crazy play. Everybody the, the, hurts. The tackle, like, the, he just went low and Stefan d- jumped over him where he should have just gone in full body. Yeah. He just tried to do like a little, I think it's called a Falcon crest. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I felt bad for the defenders. Today. I did too. That shit was horrible. But, but the best play I've ever seen, I was there when Kobe scored 81 points, I remember. Uh, that was kind of That's an interesting cool. time. That's the only Laker game I've ever been to actually. And what else, dude? Oh. You know, Sandler's making a movie about Sean Payton. Kevin James is playing Sean Payton. I almost, I, I almost auditioned to be in should have gone in for that shit and played Sean Payton's wife or something. I should or have. Or his concubine. Ooh, I like I don't that. know if he has a concubine. Or I could have played Alvin Kamara, maybe, or... I'd you played... Yeah. Drool Breeze, if I'd have been in a freaking wheelchair. What? Drew Breeze is dope. No, Drool Breeze. Say, if, if Drew Breeze got hit by, like, a car or something. Oh, okay. like in an alternate universe. So you're just universe? gonna change the whole like storyline. Yeah, an alternate add. universe. There's a guy named Drool Breeze. Yeah, and he still plays. <laughs> I mean, he, but, I mean, he's like, they want him to play, but he can't, you know. But he still does because he's Drool Breeze. He's like the Stephen Hawking of footballers, kind of. Right. You know. He's like left blue fifty two, <laughs> blue fifty two. <laughs> and he just has like a t-shirt cannon instead of like an arm. So Boom. he's just like, <laughs> and just shoots the ball. Every place is a hail mary. <laughs> That would be a fucking amazing movie. Dude, we just wrote a fucking hit movie. Oh, we're good. Yeah, I, I actually, I got up for to go in. I didn't go in. I should have, probably. You canceled it because you had a podcast? Probably. Because podcast is in my control. It's like, I like to do stuff that's in my control, you right. know? I actually might start a podcast. Really? Yeah. Everybody's just been telling They're like, why don't you do one? And I'm, I'm like, I don't know, because it's hard doing the road and filming, and so it'd be nice to just... Do a pod. Did you get plastic surgery while you were down there? No, why? Your eyes look more like magnetic, kind of. I got magnets in my eyes. Is that what you mean? <laughs> oh, that could have been it. Yeah, yeah they injected magne- magnesium. Really? Are you an envel- uh, 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 yes. Are you an evangelical Christian? Correct. Damn. Yeah, I'm also an X Men now. Ooh. Yeah. So oh, you I'm, mean you I, get a you get a you got this sexual reconstructive surgery? Correct. Yeah, and then also I have magnets in my eyes. Oh, damn. So um, if there's somebody's a robot near me, my eyes go right on their dick. <laughs> or vagines. And... Yeah, it's exciting. Do you think we'll still have comedy in the future, Nick? Do you think that this is something that's going to be around for a while? You know, you start to see um, a-, a comedian died the other day. This guy, Matt Billen. Matt Bylan? Bylan, I think. Who? I don't know. Matt Bylan. What prompted do you think comedy will be around in the future? Yeah, I don't Why'd know. Why do you say that? When are people going to not like laughing? Well, because here's what's happening. Robots. 
Well, they can. They have so much. Um, they can create everything now. So it's like at a certain point, you're still going to need people when they could just create a bot of a human. You know what I'm saying? Like comedy bot, or what do you mean? Well, like they're just starting to create. Like so. Anyway, this comedian that passed away, Matt Bilon, Bilon, uh, Bilon, Bilon, maybe Bilon. Right. I looked the other day. I, I went on Facebook. I put Matt Bilon death. Right. Because I was just trying to find out what had happened to him. I didn't. Right. I just heard, and there were all these articles that were written, but they were written by bots. So it's like, oh, that's interesting. Now, like, because some of it didn't make sense, it would have like some information and then like a ad for like Zales, like written right into the typing. Oh, that's you know what gross. I'm saying? Yeah. Right, it's gross. But it's like five of the six things I even found about him passing away were written by bots. Why don't you just call somebody that's a comic? Right, I agree, but it just starts. Not met a stand-up comic yet? But yeah, but it's just interesting (laughs) that inform like bots are writing articles now, and some of the articles, they it was you got the you under you you know it was information without the sales information. Yeah, yeah, no. Well, that's like no discount, but you got the information. But that's like thing about Instagram too is like I would meet people or friends of mine that are like whatever personalities but I, I would look on their instagram i'm like they have two hundred thousand followers i'm like that's fucking crazy i didn't know they were fucking crushing it that hard yeah and then i would like click on a photo i'm like oh it's a cool photo and there'll be all these comments and i would like click on them like but uh, they would be like hey awesome picture have a great day yeah bubble and all these like comments where i'm like who the fuck <laughs> is this and then i would click on it and then a couple of my friends i called out i'm like yeah. bro there's who is Z Bop Zozo Z like yeah, somebody yeah. <laughs> and they'd be yeah. like oh I'm or, like, like you're not even using my holes that's what it'll say something like that and you're like what <laughs> that is that would this? be amazing if it, if there was like a system that would sell you like bot comments but it was just they could say whatever they want <laughs> yeah I feel like it's a lot of bots out there I just fucked your mom what do you think com- comedy will be like in the future I mean where do you see it do you think it'll always be around or do you think Stand up comedy, or that it too could comedy. get botted out. Stand up comedy, yeah, of course, because there's nothing like seeing a live show, there's just nothing like it. Yeah, when you see a comic live, you know, you don't know what's what's gonna happen. It's fucking awesome. But they, what about all those people that died at that one event recently? You see that thing, that Travis Scott thing? Was he doing stand up? No, he's just singing, but no, yeah, that was awful. Those people got crushed. Can I you... saw a video of like that at a soccer match in England. And it's one of the worst. I wish I could unsee it. And it was a fucking mob pushing against the gate. And it was like a fucking almost like a cheese grater. Mm. These people are just smashed and they all like tons of people died. It was awful. Oh, it's just so sad. That's why, like, I don't want to have kids, dude. I don't want to send them off to a fucking concert. And then they're dead. What concert will you take them to? What was your first concert? Radiohead. Oh, really? Yeah, it was dope. Was what the hell am I doing here? Yeah. God, they were good. It was at a small club, at Prince's Club called First Avenue. I mean, it's not small, but it's like, you know, 300, 400 people. And uh, they, that, their new album, is The Bones, just that came place up. or no? It's not Bunkers, but Bunkers is dope. I went too. to Bunkers a couple weeks ago. Oh, yeah, you were just there. But uh, yeah, and so I saw my buddy. He's like, you want to go see this band Radiohead? And I'm like, do they sing that song Creep? And he's like, yeah. I'm like, all right. And he goes, yeah, they have a new album called The Benz. And we went, and it was fucking insane. Yeah. And then I was like hooked on going to concerts. That's the thing about live shows with comedy. Like, support like your clubs and go see live comedy. Yeah, there's nothing like it's it. It's so fun. There's nothing yeah. like it. There's nothing like it. And you might find a little fucking diamond in the rough. Yeah. Like, I used to bring God, comics that I would meet that were funny it's that were funny as shit you know oh yeah like i had zach galifianakis open for me i had like a lot of people that you don't know what you're gonna see it's like a band when you go oh that band's great and somebody'd be like oh yeah i wanted to bring you to the concert like i saw the white stripes you know there oh yeah fucking dope and i was really hip to oh yeah music back then i had two tickets to the white stripes at the l rage great venue Mm. it was like a third full like this is just before they broke but I knew him. I was like, fucking hip as shit, dude. Yeah. And uh, I went, and there was, like it said, third full. Wow. And I, I couldn't even give the ticket away. I'd call people. And then years later, my friends would listen to him, and I'm like, yeah, I had the ticket. I called you. Yeah, you didn't care. And then I fucking took a brick. Mm. 
Mm. Smash it in your head. Yep. Smash it in your head. Right in your fucking eyes. Smash it in your head. Brick to the eye, dog. Smash it in your head. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Let's see one more question that came up, mm-hmm. man, and then we'll get you out oh. of here. Oh, wow. Oh. Oh. I just came urine. Oh. Help! Is it Christmas already? What's the question? This guy's doing well right here. See, this is what I'm talking about, this COVID. Period. Yo, what up, Nick and Theo? It's your boy Dan calling from up here in northern Maine. Yeah, Nick, I got a would you rather for you. Okay. Would you rather be able to read people's mind or would you rather be able to see into the future? Theo, appreciate you. Love you, baby gang. Gang, baby. Thank you. I'm in North Maine, I hope to go to Bangor sometime uh, in, in May. That's one of the only states I've never been to. Uh, let me answer your question. See into the future. How far into the future? We got to mm. work on that. Read people's minds. The future would kind of freak me out. The mind I could kind of like learn from, but the future, I, I don't know if I want to know the future. Yeah. Because that's, it's like but God. again, how far into the future? So let's fucking work on that. But um, I'm going to go with, um, no, fuck it. I'm going to go with reading the future. Because if you read somebody's mind, you know, it couldn't be like literal. Cause sometimes I'll just think of weird shit. That's yeah. What if the guy's an idiot and you're stuck with him forever? Well, if or what if, what if this? What if it's You're Brendan in... Schaub? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I'm, Brendan's a friend of mine. That's no. right. I'm, so don't <laughs> but it's only I'm two like... paragraphs? Yeah, you're like, damn, this mind It's just is... like, dude, what? <laughs> oh, you're cold, dog. Dude, but I'm yeah. going after those guys. Uh, oh, dude, those job. guys look that's like That's our co- fucking job. Bro, those guys, uh, fucking Brendan Schaub literally looks like a fucking love seat. <laughs> <laughs> he bought a Corvette. That's yeah. what it looks like. He looks like if White Claw were a person, yeah. like the drink White Claw. Yeah, he looks like the abominable White Clawman. Yeah, that's what <laughs> yep. he looks like. He we looks love like Brian and Brian. He looks like Paul Bunyan's gay little son, dude. He looks like Paul Dud. Like he'll fucking <laughs> just axe your. He'll axe, he'll just axe right through his own butt. He'll axe body spray you to death. <sighs> All right, I well, got Rolo. Yeah. I think we covered it, man. So is it safe to say that you're back in the business? I think so. I think I'm back. So I'm just getting it all together right now. Fucking sober Kai again. Are you? Yep. How long you been sober for? Um, Two months. Wow, congratulations, man. Yeah. We got, well, actually, you know what? We have one more question. Since that, I know one of the questions that came in that was good. Um, Let's get it in here. What's up, Theo? What's up, Nick? This is Paul from Virginia. Um, I know both you guys in the past have struggled with, um, drugs and alcohol and, um, myself as well, uh, fell victim to the dark arts recently. Um, and I'm going into, uh, residential rehab, uh, here in a couple days. So I was just curious if you guys had any advice for someone trying to achieve uh, long-term sobriety. Thanks gang gang. Dang, baby. Okay. I mean, do you want to take it or do you want me to jump in first? Well, I think whatever. And we, and we can also, if you, I mean, I just felt like this is, we could try to just share anything, our experience, you know? I mean, it's tricky. It depends upon, A, is it drugs and alcohol? Drugs, which drug? You know what I mean? I've done every drug. You've probably done every drug. Yeah, I think I have. I never smoked crack. I've smoked crack. You have? Yeah, I haven't done heroin. I haven't done heroin either. I always wanted to smoke crack. I did it like kind of on accident. Yeah. yeah. I only did it once. And I was like, oh, it's this. And then I was like, what? Are...? And they were like, that's crack. And I'm like, why? I can't feel my lips. You can hear the train coming. That's what I hear. I hear if I, I just hear it's all aboard, dude. That crack train, boy. I know. Fucking crack spray went... hound, too, dude. Welcome all aboard the spray eee. hound. You will just start. I mean, I heard you can't even stop just the e jack from coming out of you. I don't know. I just, I did it. I just, I got an accident once and I was like, I don't want to do that. Accidental crack? Yeah, I was like I already right, fucked God. up and somebody handed me a pipe. It was fucking glass. And I thought it was fucking there was some white uh, shit in it. And I'm like, oh. What's this thing? I want to smoke till my fucking wife and kids are gone. That's what I want to do. I mean, yeah, why not? But yeah, it was a crack accident. Yeah. It was, dude. Let's go. Well, no, I should take this seriously. But uh Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, it it really depends upon you and you know, I'm not a fucking doctor. But in my experience, which is kind of what you asked, it's tricky. I mean, it, and that's an understatement, but you've got to just really, I had to pull back a lot because I've been hospitalized a couple of times um, for alcohol and I had to really get a grip on 
what I wanted out of my life and really take time for myself. And, you know, it sounds corny, but love yourself and appreciate yourself and the people that care about you and just look at the big picture. And it's, you know, I've seen a lot of people go the opposite and not make it out. You really have to figure out what you want to do. I mean, do you, I don't know. That yeah. was a really messy answer, but no, I think that's a good point. That's a great, that's a great answer. I think. Because that really determines it. It's not up to any invisible power. I mean, it could be up to God if you need to find a higher power to help you. But, um, but yeah, I think trying to have some semblance of what your goal is for yourself. Because a lot of times I find if I'm not, if I'm goalless and I don't have any real intention, then I'm much more likely to fall into the dark arts, really, for me. You know, right. if I'm just letting the world affect me, however, and I don't have a plan every day when I kind of wake up, then. Of course, I'm going to fall prey to whatever. And there's a lot of dark forces out there, man. You know, freaking everything, man. Um, yeah, anything will, will pull you in. It's really, I mean, in my experience, I, I've i gone back and forth with alcohol. And I've been on podcasts and talked about it. I've been hospitalized and whatnot. And I finally just had to find a reason and goals, like Theo said, where I'm like, you know, this is what I want to do. Yeah, you gotta like care about yourself and stuff like that. And drugs are different, so I don't know what drugs you're into. But in my yeah. experience, it was alcohol and drugs. Drugs just I, that just made me feel like shit. Like when I would, I did coke, you know, a hand, oh, yeah. handful of times. You've had the fuck or a handful, damn, <laughs> yeah, a handful many times. But yeah, it's oh, I'll eat a squirrel from the backside on coke, dude. That stuff will really. My God. Just, Don't do that. You will but, start um, at the back of an animal, Sonny, and get to know it. But, but I'll you've got to want to help yourself. You really do. Right. Like, if if you, you know, you just reach out, seek help if you need it. and But you really, 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 it comes down to you and wanting to, to get help and get off that shit, man. And it's easier said than done, but I've been down that road. And sometimes it takes a wake-up call. And I had a couple, and sometimes you fucking don't wake up. A lot Damn. of my friends, you know. I mean, you've had friends who have died. I've had s half of the comedian friends I know. I mean, it's just, it's just sad. Oh, and, yeah. You know, especially during the pandemic, it's been a tough time for a lot of people. Yeah, I think. Look, yeah, I mean, I find that twelve step has helped me. You know, I Everyone's struggle. Everyone's different. Yeah. Yeah, I'm thinking about going to a place in january for a couple weeks just to even just get i'm not even struggling or anything right now but just to have some time for myself to take care of myself you know I, i've spent so much time working as well yeah it's like i've never sat and thought what's even going on in my life or what do i want do i want me a family or something get me a little armadillo yeah give me a little armadillo bro something for your arm you know or yeah. armadilla you know armadilla so yeah get a couple damn well, good luck, man, and hang in there. It's a process, dude, but you just yeah. really yeah. It, just you can do it. Yeah, you can do it, man. Here's the thing. Other people have done it, so you can definitely do it. Yeah, you'll meet a lot. You'll meet a ton of people. It's you'll. It's more than you think of people that have struggled with abuse. So, you know, reach out and, yeah, be well, man. Yeah, good luck, man. You got this, bro. You got this, some right, residential dog. treatment. Um, all right, man, Nick Swartzen, welcome back. Welcome back to the world, baby. Yeah, good to be back. Um, and we'll put you up on social so people can find you and all of that. And, and uh, man, I'm excited to see you back on stage and stuff. I know. I'm interested to see what's going to happen. I Two years is a long time. Yeah, it is, to man. To rock the mic. It's awesome, though. <laughs> gang, baby. Gang, gang. Now I'm just floating on the breeze And I feel I'm falling like these leaves I must be cornerstone Oh, but when I reach that ground I'll share this peace of mind I found I can feel it in my bones But it's gonna take a little time For me to set that parking brake and let myself all wild shine that light on me. I'll sit and tell you my stories. Shine on me, and I will find a song. I will sing it just for you. Run away train with a hand. 
load of my past And these friends that I've been riding on They're worn so thin that they're damn near gone I guess 